So one problem that students have quite a lot is how to answer questions more effectively, uh, accurately. Um, given all the revision that you do, how best to use that information um, given the question. Now my solution is really it comes down to better revision practice. If you do your revision better then you can select the information that you're going to use to answer the question a bit more effectively um, and make more informed choices and decisions and, and make maybe more quick decisions during the exam. Okay, and one way that you're going to address this is by um, organizing your information during the note making process. As early as that, you're going to be more effective at organizing your information so that it's, it's arranged in levels of detail. Okay, and then according to the number of uh, marks or the type of question that's being asked, you can then choose the most relevant level of detail that you're going to go into. So one of the things that maybe you're doing is assuming that biology is you know, all about content and detail. All right. And A, it's not about not just about the content, it's about concepts, about ideas and ideas you can only test out your understanding of doing exam questions. Next, it is about detail, but at the same time, it's about the right detail. So um, looking at this organization of you know, topics, subtopics, and then the detail, are we, are we guilty of limiting what we are revising to just lists and lists of details? Because we want to get away from that, okay? We want to get away from just remembering details and we want to move into organizing our information like this so that we have topics then topics divided into sections and sections divided into lists of about maybe five to ten points you know manageable amounts of detail which build collectively these sections and subsections they build a rounded and you know all-encompassing picture of a topic Okay, now I'll give some examples of what I mean. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this, but we'll replace it with other things. So remember, big picture first, the amplification of DNA. Okay, so the question asks us about that. The obvious answer is the polymerase chain reaction. Okay, so we've got the polymerase chain reaction. Now, that's a one mark answer to that. But, you know, what if, what if it's three marks? Well, then uh, we might talk about the three stages of PCR, okay? So we'll talk about the first stage of denaturation. We can talk about the next stage, which is the annealing step. And the third stage being the DNA synthesis step or Okay, so we have these three, if, if a question is asking us for, th for three marks, we might talk about that. But could we go to nine marks, or eight marks, or ten marks? Well, then we start to detail then what's happening during each of those steps. So for denaturation, we might talk about the temperature that we use, approximately 90 degrees. We'll talk about um, what happens during this step, which allow, gives enough kinetic energy to the molecules to break hydrogen bonds, resulting in a separation of the strands, resulting in denaturation. Okay, then we can detail annealing, that we lower the temperature, to 50 degrees um, causes the primers to hydrogen bond with the DNA and finally that we raise the temperature to about 70 degrees that 
this causes the DNA polymerase to bind and which causes synthesis of complementary strands giving us uh, you know two new DNA molecules from the original one and so the cycle continues but you get my point okay and so you can use the number of marks offered you can use the wording of the question to um, also inform your decision making process about which of this information or which combination of this information is going to be best for your answer okay but if you just had this block of information to deal with without the structure that led up to it it might make your decision making process a bit difficult um, this this kind of thing would be part of an even bigger tree because if we think of this in the bigger scheme of things of um, genetic uh, you know sequencing or genetic modification or dna profiling then you know the amplification that's itself it's part of a bigger tree isn't it okay so the amplification of dna comes into that little branch of um that comes after you've used restriction enzymes you've used restriction enzymes to cut um, genomic DNA into fragments well we might want to detail then again restriction enzymes what do they do so even restriction enzymes will have its own little tree following amplification of DNA what's the next step well it would be electrophoresis that would be the next step and again electrophoresis has its own little tree of information and detail okay so if you get like a five mark question on how to make a dna profile do you need to talk about the individual steps within pcr no right what they're asking for are is the top level of the tree where they they're asking you about the extraction of dna restriction enzymes creating the fragments of that dna the amplification of the DNA, the electrophoresis, the, you know, the visualization of the bands according to the different fragment sizes, that would be your five mark answer to how a DNA profile is produced. Okay, but you could equally get a five mark question on how are the bands separated to produce or how, how is the DNA separated based on size to produce the DNA profile that would be an answer entirely on electrophoresis so you know organization of your information may be just as important as making sure that you remember everything um, so yeah make sure that uh, you're incorporating that as part of your process and uh, good luck guys <laughs>